So what's going on guys? Thank you for tuning in to this oh, dude, video. Nice. This is gonna be really special because right now we are at Overhome Alpaca Farm and I'm here with Carol, the owner, and we're gonna be here learning about alpacas. And Carol, I just appreciate you allowing us to come here on your farm. Uh, can you just tell the viewers how you guys got into alpacas and just a little bit about this farm? Sure. Um, this is a family farm. So this not only is um, that I'm the owner, but also my husband and my brother. And my son is very much a part of our farm too. Mm -hmm. um, so we started our, the farm's been in the family for generations. This was my grandparents' farm who had dairy at one time. Okay. My mother grew up here. Um, she also lives on the same road on another farm. And so this she always referred to as Over Home because she grew up here. Okay. So that's how we got our name Over Home oh, Alpacas. Yeah. So it's kind of a little quaint, maybe, but. For us, it has a special Big meaning. Family farm, and it's, yep. it's always been. Yeah, that's, that's really so great. So at one time, the guys had raised beef, um, and they've always farmed the fields and the crops. I haven't been too much involved until about 12 years ago, okay. when we decided to do something different. Yeah, and we got alpacas. We um, were all over 50 at that point, so we decided to kind of jump in hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> and uh, we started off with a foundation herd of approximately 20 alpacas. Okay. Out of that 20 alpacas, there were 11 breeding females wow. with babies on the way. Okay. So our very first year- so You really year, hit the ground running. Yeah, we hit the ground running. Our first year, we had eight babies born on the farm. That's neat. That's really exciting. Cool. Well, can we take a tour and Learn some more. Sure. Awesome. So alpacas are part of the camelid family. Um, in the camelid family, there are alpacas, llamas, vicuñas, and guanacas. Um, all of those four breeds originated in South America okay. and were imported. They live along the Andes Mountains. Guanacas and vicuñas are still typically just South American animals. So within the alpacas, though, there are two types of alpacas. There are wakayas and there are surreys. Wakayas are the ones that their fiber grows out from the body and they get real fluffy like mm -hmm. a teddy bear look. Um, most people are familiar with wakayas even though they might not know the name or the term. Um, surreys only make up about 20% of the alpaca population in the United States. They're more rare. Okay. Um, and surreys, their fiber grows down from the body in heavy locks. So it's known for its drape and its luster. We are Surrey breeders. Um, one isn't better than the other. The fiber is just a little bit different. Uh, alpacas are raised strictly for fiber. Okay. However, um, there are farms, and definitely in South America, that once the fiber is not the best quality fiber mm -hmm. anymore, the alpacas are used for meat. Okay. Now is that, I'm sorry, did you say when they get older? Sometimes when they get older or if you have an animal that doesn't produce the best fiber mm -hmm. um, compared to others, people might um, process those gotcha. animals. Now what does that taste like? Is that like a deer? It, no, it actually, I think it tastes more like beef. Okay. It's very, wow. very lean and it's very healthy. Um, there are some farms that would never, never um, process, process yeah. their, their alpacas. Um, but I grew up farming, mm -hmm. and it's a, a livestock, so I'm okay with that. There's some animals here I would never send to the butcher. Um, they would be old, and probably fiber yeah. would be bad. But they're animals that you know you grow attached to stuff. Right. Alpacas are very curious, but they're also very shy. So they won't just come for hugs and kisses like most people want them to do. Um, they are not. Like our alpacas are not raised for a petting zoo. If people want to hug and kiss alpacas, then they need to find a petting zoo that has mm -hmm. them. And they are a herd animal. You cannot have one uh, alpaca by itself. It would get too lonesome and probably wouldn't um, live very long. And when one runs, they all run. When one sees something um, suspicious in a field 
and there might be an alert call going out that one of them does, they all look in the same direction. When we breed, we don't typically, quote, breed for color. Some farms might, that might be their breeding program, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, we breed more about the fiber and trying to improve what the mom might be carrying. Um, maybe she doesn't have a lot of density, so we make sure the male that um, we use has more fiber and a lot of density. Now, is there like different grades of fiber? There or? is. How's that? Yeah, so um, your your best alpaca is a alpaca that has a lot of density, a lot of fiber, okay. but it's also very fine because fine is nicer. Once it starts getting coarser, then those fibers you wouldn't use for garments next to your skin. And then this area that we're standing in right now, this is called a creep pen. So how this works is we have gates, which your daughter found. Um, this is big enough, we can take this, the slats are adjustable. Right now it's adjusted so that the babies, the Koreas, can come in here and eat hay. Um, we put a little alfalfa in for the growing babies and they can get grain anytime during the day they want to. So they don't, they're don't they not being bullied or whatnot? Right, well, and because they have a hard time getting the grain when the mamas are all eating. The mamas yeah. want that grain. So our alpacas, when we um, put them in different groups, we group them. First of all, um, according to male or female, you never want to have males and females in the same pens, unless they're, they're baby males with their moms yet. Um, even if males have been neutered, uh, we still recommend that you do not put them with females. Um, it's, it's better that the males are with the males and the females are with the females. So, and then we also divide them according to age because of nutritional purposes. In this one pen over here are yearling girls. They were born last summer. There is, I think, 18 yearling girls there. So they all can get fed the same uh, nutritional um, feed and hay. And then we have two different groups of moms and babies from this year. And we'll go see some of those. And we separate them, the pastures. We do rotational grazing. Um, and that's why you see all these long pastures and no animals on them. Because every week we try to put them in a different pasture so that we never totally lose our grass even if it is dry and we separate the pastures just by high tensile which is not electrified um, alpacas are not challenging to fences they will they will though escape if they see an open gate because they're very curious and once one sees an open gate they all go they all so go, yeah. So none of this fence is electric? No. That's amazing. Our alpacas always have access to either um, a shelter, three-sided shelter, or the barn. So they can come and go as they want to. Ever have issues with any type of predators or um, that try to breach the fence? Or are they pretty much, are they a protective animal or a guard animal as well? Or um, No, alpacas really, you know, it's fight or flight and they really have just flight they don't have a fight mechanism so the biggest predator believe it or not to alpacas um, in this area is probably dogs that are roaming and okay. then start roaming together and then and will will attack I've heard of some pretty bad stories of dog attacks on alpacas which is sad yeah um, we do not have any like coyotes or beers or anything where we live um, people can still raise alpacas in those areas. They just have to have much better fencing mm -hmm. and higher perimeter fencing um, So that they don't have a problem. The only thing we have in our fields that once in a while is fox and fox are not They're harmless to alpacas. Yeah, they wouldn't be big enough. Typically we wait till our females are two years old before we uh, breed them What about separating them from mom? How long? Um, usually when the babies are with the moms Typically, it's six months, and then they, we wean them. A lot of times, ours are a little bit older because I hate to take the babies away from the moms in the middle of winter. Yeah. So I usually wait till the weather breaks. Okay. And then I will, and then we wean. And when we do the weaning, we wean gradually. So the first day, they might only be away from their moms for a few hours. 
and then we put them back. Gotcha. And then we increase that time over a period of maybe two to three weeks okay. so that it's gradual for both the mom and for the babies. So I know you mentioned uh, you harvest the, the fiber once a year, right? Right. Now, where does, where does that go? Do you process it and clean it? Do you bring it somewhere? Um, and then, then what, do you guys make stuff or do you sell that? Okay, so I do uh, a variety of things with our fiber. Some of it I will sell outright. Um, some of it I sell to hand spinners Good. that are looking for Surrey alpaca fiber. Some of it I will send to a co-op that we use and they in turn will send um, fiber from all across the United States to get products made okay. and then we can get products back to sell in our farm store. So yeah, that was so that, my next yeah, question. Yeah. So that has some of our fiber in but not exclusively oh, no. our fiber. Um, some of it um, some of it I still have in storage. Yeah. Um, I do a little bit of cleaning of it and carting. Like I will make my own bats for people so that if they spin, they can get that. I like to dye the fiber. Um, so and there's have, a variety of things you that- You have products on your website? We don't have them set up on our website. We do have our farm store. Okay. Um, and we do send some of our fiber, fiber to a mill to get our yarn done. Okay. Um, and so then I can sell our yarn in the store too. Alpacas also, so they um, are community poopers, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, so they go typically in one or a couple areas. These girls okay. aren't too good about that right now, but. <laughs> that must make it easier for cleanup. It does sure. make it easier for cleanup. And we try to clean up our pastures every single day. And of course, in the barn and sheds, we clean up. And then, you know, we always make sure they have fresh hay and water. Now, with that, do you do you guys use their manure for yes, any type of fertilizer? We do. Or? we do. So when we clean up, we actually the building you see over here is called our composting building. So we dump everything in there, and then we have different um, pits that it gets turned and rotated, and it breaks down. And then we actually, because we have all the farm fields and the crops, we actually spread that back on our farmland. So this is your property as well. Yes. Okay. And that's the barn over there. You yeah, right here, this this shed. Um, now, I noticed that it seems pretty, like almost like goat poop, but obviously a little bigger. Right. Yeah, so an alpaca um, manure is very good for crops. A lot of people like to use it in their uh, gardening because alpaca poop is not... Um, a waste product that has to break down before you can put it on. You could take a shovel full of this fresh and put it right in the garden and it That's won't amazing. do any damage to your to your crops. When you mix it, be interested to go see, do you just mix it with the leftover hay and yep, the so nitrogen a lot of times carbon? There's, yep, there's lots of straw that goes in with there because we use straw to absorb the extra uh, liquid and urine from yeah. the barn. Um, so we have lots of compost that you know, it's composted with straw. Yeah, always improving soil. I, I, I enjoy that as well, is like improving the soil for your crops. Right. Because then you have better crops for your animals. Right. What about like maintenance, like trimming um, hooves and like you said, deworming or, or taking care of their yep. parasites. How often do you have to do that kind of maintenance on So them? we, our protocol here on this farm is every five weeks we do what's oh. called herd health. Okay. So then we will, um, give them a shot to prevent um, meningeal worm, which is carried by white-tailed deer. And okay, we have yeah. white-tailed deer, yep. so we give them an ivermectin shot, um, dependent on their weight, so a lot of times we will weigh them. Mm -hmm. And then at that time, we will also check if they need their toenails trimmed, because they have a soft pad with toenails and um, any other maintenance that might need to be done. And then we also will give vitamins if they need vitamins and that's an every five week every rotation. Every five week rotation. All hands on deck, I'm sure. Yes, all yeah. hands on deck. And sometimes in the very middle of winter, if we've had a really cold winter, we might not do it. Okay. Um, just because of the freeze. Right. But you know that all depends on. 
May, yeah. yeah, the, the weather. weather. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if someone wanted to get into alpaca farming or even just have alpacas for, for pets, what would be your biggest recommendation right, right from the start? I think my biggest recommendation was the more they learn before they actually get the animals, mm -hmm. the better. So visit some alpaca farms, see what they do. Um, also maybe take a class or two. We do like a one-on-one -on, -one on alpaca, basic alpacas. Okay. Um, we recommend people, you know, get their basic information before they start. Some people might just go with pet fiber animals. Uh, other people might be interested in breeding. I would say usually most people will start with maybe three to five, um, even if they're females and a lot of times if they decide they are they want to do breeding they might get the females and have them bred before they arrive okay so that their first year they'll have offspring yeah if that's their goal and then again just get as much as information as you right. can beforehand right that's always the best is educate yourself you know talk to alpaca owners right that's a lot of times the best way. Well, all right, Carol. I really appreciate you giving us the opportunity to tour your property and learn about alpacas. You're very welcome. Um, I learned a lot, and I hope you guys learned a lot as well. And again, can you just tell everyone where they could find you and how they could get in contact with you? Sure. If you want to go to our website, www.overhomealpacas.com, and there's links on there that you can check out um, there's a place you can send me a message and I can get back to you if you have specific questions or if you just want to sign up for our email list you can always just let your email there um, we also have a Facebook page that they can right. go to awesome and I will put all that stuff in the description down below and go check that out and if you guys are interested in alpacas please reach out it this is amazing property I, we had a blast thank really you. appreciate your kindness to our children and yeah, us you're welcome and so guys hey i really appreciate you guys tuning into this video um if you guys like what you see give us a big thumbs up leave some comments and again hit that subscribe button and we will see you guys on the next video